Welcome to An Honorable Profession, a podcast giving America hope since 2018. I'm Ryan Coonerty. Along with Debbie Cox Bolton of the New Deal, I'm lucky enough to be your co-host. An Honorable Profession is a New Deal Leaders podcast. The New Deal is an organization that supports the next generation of American leaders. From attorneys generals, to state senators, to mayors, to school board members, these are the people that are pushing policies and politics that will respond to climate change, rebuild our economy, address racial injustice, and restore our democracy. These are incredibly talented people who have dedicated themselves to public service when their country and their communities need it the most. Check out NewDealLeaders.org to see what I'm talking about. Today, I was absolutely thrilled to welcome to the program the Democratic nominee for governor in New Hampshire, Joyce Craig. Joyce is a New Deal alum who served two terms as the mayor of Manchester, and she's currently locked in the closest race for governor anywhere in the country. Mayor Craig talked about what it's like on the campaign trail and the issues that matter most to the Granite Staters, including affordable housing and reproductive freedom. We talk about her accomplishments as mayor, how she takes care of herself while she's campaigning, and what prompted her to get involved in public service in the first place. We also talk about what makes campaigning unique in New Hampshire, the possibility of flipping a legislative chamber there, and her closing message to voters heading into the home stretch. She was nice to take a minute off the campaign trail for us, and I hope you enjoy. Joyce Craig, Madam Mayor, welcome to an honorable profession. Oh, thank you, Debbie. It's wonderful to be here with you. It is so nice to see you. I have been thinking a lot about you as you are headed into your home stretch in what is the tightest race for governor in the country. Uh, I'm sure you are feeling all of it being so close. Um, just starting to say, you know, how, how are you feeling about everything? You know, we feel really good. Uh, we've been on the trail for probably a year and a half now, uh, traveling across the state you know, having really meaningful conversations with residents, with business owners. And there's such a tremendous opportunity to really do better for residents in our state. So, you know, I'm energized by this opportunity. Um, We're in the final stages, as you said. So now, you know, in New Hampshire, retail politics uh, means the world to us. So we are knocking doors, making phone calls, writing those postcards and doing everything that we need to do to win. Yeah. And you, as you said, you've been doing this for a long time. So this is definitely a marathon, not a sprint, um, <laughs> even though it may feel like a sprint in these final days. You've been out talking to people for a long time. What are you hearing when you're knocking on doors and talking to people? What is on people's minds mostly? Yeah, I mean, there are a number of things that have been coming up uh, as we're talking to residents. Um, certainly the housing crisis uh, is an issue in New Hampshire and across our country. Uh, you know, the projections in New Hampshire are that we need 60,000 housing units by 2030. Uh, so we have to start building right away. Um, when I was mayor of Manchester, we really tackled this challenge and allocated over $30 million toward affordable housing. And today we have over 2,000 homes and apartments in development. So you know, I have the hands-on experience of getting this done. And you know, as mayor, uh, you you're on the front line and I want to bring that hands-on experience and, you know, passion for, for delivering uh, to the governor's office. And, you know, I'll mention um, my opponent uh, is talking about housing, uh, but what she has in her background is that she has served on a corporate board for Blackstone, uh, the largest corporate landlord in the country uh, that buys properties, jacks up rents, and pushes people out of their home. So again, while I have the experience of building and addressing this challenge and making a difference in people's lives, she's actually profiting off of this challenge. And it is not what we need to lead our state. Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought up your, your um, work as mayor. Of course, that's where we know each other from. We've been so um, loved working with you as, as mayor of Manchester. You did so many amazing things. When you think about that, um, you know, that you're bringing that executive experience already into this race. When you think about your time as uh, as mayor, are there a couple things in addition to the housing work that you did that stand out for you that you're proud of that you'd like to see scale um, statewide if it, when elected, I'm going to say when elected governor? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I know there are a number of mayors that are in New Deal and, uh, you know, and when you're mayor, you know, you are on the ground uh, dealing with challenges. You know, I took the city through COVID um, and, you know, have created opportunities. So, 
Manchester, uh, we applied for one of the Build Back Better Regional Challenge grants, and we were the only municipality in the entire country to win. We focused on the biomanufacturing industry here in Manchester. And so now we have $44 million coming in to build out lab space. It's creating more uh, childcare opportunities, which again, we desperately need in New Hampshire, workforce development, and it's creating 7,000 new family sustaining jobs. Uh, so it's a game changer for our state. And I wanna do things like that for every corner of New Hampshire. And what we saw with that opportunity was it didn't end uh, after the Build Back Better Regional Challenge win. Uh, shortly after that, Manchester and Nashua, sort of in the southern tier of the state, were deemed a tech hub and received another $40 million to boost their local economy. And so, you know, it's a tremendous opportunity, again, to really change the direction of people's lives and do better. And that's what we need to do across our entire state. Yeah, that, that, it, it, that was so amazing what you did as mayor and congratulations on all of that. It is, it is a huge accomplishment and so exciting. I know um, I'm, I'm watching you, I'm watching the race, I'm watching some of the stuff that's, that's, uh, that is being talked about. And of course, this is a huge issue nationally, but I know choice um, and a woman's right to choose reproductive health generally is a huge issue in your race. Talk a little bit about um, what you're saying, the stakes in this race, kind of how that's playing out on the ground. You know, you are absolutely right. And um, as I'm traveling around the state, it is housing, it is reproductive freedom is what I'm hearing. Uh, so New Hampshire uh, is the only state in New England that hasn't actually codified access to abortion. And so it is and has been under attack since uh, Roe and um, or since the Dobbs decision. And so um, what we saw the last session is that Republicans actually proposed a 15 day and then a 15 week abortion ban. Uh, and so, you know, many people, including myself, who have two daughters, are really concerned about where things are going in New Hampshire. We currently have an abortion ban in place. Um, and my focus is on making sure we're codifying access to abortion and increasing reproductive health care in our state. Because again, we've fallen way behind where we should be in terms of making sure women have access to reproductive health care. And I'll just mention, you know, my opponent, uh, uh, when she was in the Senate, voted for a national abortion ban. And she voted four times to defund Planned Parenthood. She was the one who shepherded Neil Gorsuch through the Supreme Court process and then celebrated when Roe v. Wade was overturned. So we cannot trust her when it comes to protecting reproductive freedom. And it is literally, oh, I would say, it's not literally on the ballot, but it is on the ballot uh, this election in terms of who we elect for governor. Yeah. And do you, I mean, I assume that in New Hampshire, um, live free, right? I mean, that's the motto of the <laughs> I'm yeah, New Hampshire. Yeah. I assume this is a, this is a pretty, uh, pot, you know, that, that, that you've got a very strong uh, support for abortion and, and women's health care rights in general in, in the state, right? This, that, 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 that must be a little bit out of touch is what I guess I'm saying. Yes. So you are absolutely right. Our motto is live free or die. And the overwhelmingly majority of people do believe uh, that women should have the right to do what they choose to do with their own bodies. And, you know, and again, uh, I trust women to make their own health care decisions. And I believe strongly that those decisions should be between a woman and her doctor and no politician should have a role in that. Yeah, absolutely. How about how are you feeling about enthusiasm as we, you know, get here at the end? It's been a long stretch for everyone. Obviously, you know, you've got we've got the presidential as well as, as your super important race. Are you feeling like people are in this to the end or kind of are keeping up that enthusiasm? What are you saying? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, people are understanding what's on the ballot, you know, and, uh, you know, from the presidential side with Vice President Harris and uh, Governor Walls. Um, that has brought out uh, enthusiasm and volunteers. And it's really interesting. You know, we had a uh, Canvas kickoff recently in Manchester, and we always do have a lot of volunteers coming out. Uh, but as I was looking around the room, and in Manchester, I'll just say, is, you know, my hometown and where I served as mayor. Um, so familiar with a lot of bases. But I, I would say about 50% of the people in the room were people that I had never seen before. And wow. talking to them, you know, they were just saying, you know, there's a lot on the line this election and I just can't sit back. And so that's what we're seeing, right? 
um, people want to participate. People want to make sure they're working toward, um, you know, a win on November 5th for Democrats up and down the ballot. Uh, so so we are seeing the excitement, uh, the enthusiasm, the volunteers uh, knocking doors has been phenomenal. Yeah. And as you said, retail politics in New Hampshire is the game, right? People it are used is. to having all candidates in their living room. And you know, uh, this is not going to be a, a won or, or lost on uh, on the airways in New Hampshire, right? Right. You know, it's and, and it is so unique, right? We're, we're a small state, but, you know, the, the candidates that come to, to town are, you know, I, I just recall when I was mayor, you know, I think I met and had events with, you know, every uh, Democratic candidate who was running for president. Uh, president Biden was just in New Hampshire this past week, and we had the opportunity to be him, be with him. And, you know, it's it is something that uh, residents in New Hampshire, you know, expect. They want to meet um, you as a candidate. Uh, I we have had I, I couldn't begin to tell you how many, but so many, you know, house parties and gatherings across our state uh, so that, you know, I can share my message and I can address questions and listen to ideas and hear concerns. And that has been so valuable to me as a candidate, you know, um, when people are sharing their stories and uh, it just provides context uh, to me and um, direction on what we need to do to better uh, serve people in our state. Yeah. I mean, I have to say that I've, I've always been very envious of New Hampshire being a Californian where the it, yeah. political experience is the exact opposite, right? We don't see candidates. We only see TV ads. And so whenever I've been in New Hampshire, I always, um, I really love the, that's what politics should be about, right? Is getting to meet these people, kick the tires and really see who they are as people. Um, which leads me to to maybe my another question just about the campaign, which is a little bit of a, a different question, which is this is a marathon, not a sprint. You've been doing this for, for a year and a half. How do you take care of yourself when you're out on the campaign trail? Like, how do you keep that balance of, you know, full steam ahead, but also self-care? So that's a great question. I'll start by saying, I used to be a marathon runner. <laughs> I know and, that answer, actually. Yes, I know so, that. That's right. <laughs> and so my, I have, you know, used the training um, that uh, I would follow for marathons. And I would say that it really has helped me. And one of my goals when I was running was to run 10 consecutive Boston marathons. And I did achieve that. Um, and so I liken where we are right now to being on almost, you know, at the top of Heartbreak Hill. <laughs> you know, we are so close to sort of getting downhill and uh, close to the finish line. Uh, but in terms of self-care, I would say I'm probably not doing as best that I should. Um, and uh, And it's hard, right? Because from my perspective, I don't want to look back and say, I wish I had done something. Um, you know, I want to make sure that I am putting it all out there, meeting every person that I can, answering any question that I can, raising the money that I need to, to win. Um, so uh, we are working around the clock, you know, uh, when I get home and uh, eventually my head hits the pillow, I will tell you that I fall right to sleep. Uh, but usually I'm up, uh, you know, waking up at three o'clock thinking about uh, how I'm going to answer a question or what I need to do the next day. And, and it, and it just continues. Um, so it is, you know, the balance is really hard. Uh, I would say that I'm really grateful uh, for the support of my husband. Uh, you know, he has been incredible in terms of uh, picking up things that I usually do at home or outside of home, and I wouldn't uh, be able to do it without him. And I have three children, and thankfully they're older right now and, and uh, relatively on their own. And again, uh, they're helping out and doing more than they uh, would do as well. Yeah, I know. I know your family was a a big part of what got you into politics in the first yeah. place of what interested you in, you know, in public service. Tell me a little bit about that as you sit here, hopefully on the eve of becoming governor of the state, what, what started you on this journey at all? Yeah. You know, I, it was, I blame my kids and jokingly, um, but I'll just say, you know, I, I'm an only child and I grew up in a blue collar household and my dad was an IBEW 490 electrician. Um, my parents were incredible um, and very supportive of me, but we never talked really about politics and it wasn't anything that I ever imagined that I would do. Uh, and it wasn't until I was the mother of three young children and uh Today, they're 27, 25, and 20, so it was quite a while ago, um, and I was volunteering in my kid's school and uh, realized that, you know, 
the class sizes were pretty big for one teacher. And, you know, teachers were spending a lot of time and money on Xeroxing things and getting supplies for their classrooms and, you know, not having the professional development, quite frankly, that they needed to make sure that they were best meeting the needs of their kids. And so I ran for school board and, uh, and that was the start, you know, and I'll tell you, public education and quality public education is still really what drives me today. Um, you know, I know that quality public education leads to thriving communities and creates opportunities for our kids and, and for their futures. And in New Hampshire right now, public education is also under attack. Uh, the current administration has put forward a very, you know, dangerous voucher scheme that is taking billion, millions of dollars away from our public schools and putting it toward private and religious schools. And there has been lawsuit after lawsuit, you know, basically proving that the state isn't adequately funding our public education. Um, and so a lot of that, that gets downshifted to local communities and increases local property taxes. But what at the end of the day is happening is that, um, you know, students know, uh, that live in different areas within the state are receiving a different quality of public education. And so, you know, as governor, I'm really focused on doing everything we can to fund public edu uh, to fund public education uh, so that any student, no matter where they live, has access to quality public schools. And I'll add yeah. that my middle daughter, Sarah, um, just started her third year teaching at one of the public schools here in Manchester. And I will tell you that my husband, Mike, and I are tremendously proud uh, to have a public school teacher in our family. That is so cool. And at home and close to you. So that's so yes. even, even yes. better. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Around. Yes, that's amazing. That's amazing. You mentioned um, kind of the importance of these elections up and down the ballot. I was very fortunate to get to talk to our mutual friend, uh, Senator Rebecca Quokka, not long mm -hmm. ago about what was happening in generally in New Hampshire. And we focused a lot on kind of the opportunity to potentially flip a legislative chamber. I'm just curious about kind of, again, what you're seeing as uh, that possibility and just whether that enthusiasm and the issues you laid out, housing um, choice, all of those things, you know, give you hope that that's, that's a possibility. Uh, yeah, it, you know, I think it's a tremendous possibility. And uh, it's important to ma uh, mention Matt Wilhelm as well. Yes, um, of course. State representative and minority leader. He is really leading the effort on the state representative side and working really hard. And I think that's where we have a tremendous opportunity to win back majorities. And then uh, Rebecca Perkins Quilka is a senator here, and she's really working hard to bring back majorities on the state Senate side. Yeah. Uh, but people are working really hard uh, right now. We have tremendous candidates as well. And so, you know, I am very, very optimistic uh, with uh, how things are going, uh, the issues that we're focusing on, and making sure that people understand what what each of us uh, represent. You know that the Democrats are really focused on uh, making sure that we are talking about the need to address affordable housing, the need to make sure that we are protecting and expanding reproductive freedom, you know, strengthening our public schools and decreasing costs for our hardworking families. Um, that's coming up as well, and so at a time when, you know, we've talked about a few of these issues, but the Republicans are really focused on giving these massive tax breaks to millionaires. And that's unacceptable when our hardworking families, you know, are, are having a hard time. We've really got to focus on making sure we're doing everything we can uh, for families to succeed in New Hampshire. Yeah, I, I think that that's exactly right. So, you know, when you think maybe fast forward for a minute, um, I, another thing I love about New Hampshire is it really is kind of a, it's really a swing state. It's really right. It's, it's, it's one of probably the last ticket splitting states. It's, yes. it's one of those, you know, it's a place where people really value their independence. And so I'm curious about kind of if you fast forward, and I know you're not supposed to do this, but if, you know, <laughs> but, you know, as governor, you know, what do you think would need to happen to kind of, um, start to repair some of our politics, start to repair, you know, bring together back to community. Governors have such an important role in doing that. Have that have, you know, what, what are your thoughts on, on post-election and, and how we kind of all come, come to a place where we can start just governing and making progress again? Yeah, I like from my perspective, it's always, again, focusing on the needs of residents in our state. And 
I'm hopeful, no matter what the party is, that's where we can come together and make sure that we're focused on doing what's right for residents in New Hampshire. You know, in the past, when I've been mayor, I've had I've had uh, boards, uh, the board of mayor and aldermen or its city council, you know, where we have Democrats and Republicans. And what I have done in the past is, you know, communication is so important. Um, so communicating very early, uh, but also listening to the other side and um, learning, right? And trying to find that common ground uh, that we can move forward on. And in New Hampshire, I'm really uh, optimistic, for example, when it comes to renewable energy. Um, there have been Democrats and Republicans who have been wanting to make progress on this and expand opportunities with solar, for example, uh, but they've died in the governor's office. So, you know, I look forward to, to starting there and building trust uh, and then, you know, expanding that um, into other areas that are, will really have a positive impact on residents in New Hampshire. Yeah. And, you know, you really have a track record of doing that as mayor's office. So you you know of what you speak um, and to be able to take that statewide. Uh, in our closing minute here, you know, in the spirit of a campaign, uh, do you want to make a closing statement here about kind of your uh, your campaign and what you'll be doing, what the message you'll be um, delivering down the stretch? Yeah, sure. You know, it's just as mayor of Manchester, the largest city in the state, I have the hands on experience of tackling our statewide challenges and really understand what's happening at the local level and how our state should be better supporting our cities and towns. And that's exactly what my focus will be as governor, you know, tackling the housing crisis, ensuring that our communities are safe, strengthening our public schools and trusting women to make their own health care decisions uh, and expanding and protecting reproductive health care. And so, you know, I'm asking for uh, the vote on November 5th. Uh, and I want to really thank you, Debbie, for the opportunity to speak with you. It's always a pleasure. It is always a pleasure. Thank you so much, Mayor. And um you know, just a huge thank you for taking time out of the campaign trail down the stretch. We are all eyes across the country of New Deal leaders and uh, friends are, are on you and uh, we're all sending our support. Thank you so much. An Honorable Profession is a New Deal Leaders podcast. Thanks to the team at New Deal for producing this episode. We encourage you to bring honor to public service. And because we keep things honorable, no tax dollars are used in the making of this podcast. This podcast is part of the Democracy Group.